Hello, hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel and today we just shopped my stash and reset my everyday makeup kit. So now I wanna test a few of those things out, see if they're actually gonna live in there. There's a couple things that might hit the road after this, but let's get ready together and try some products. Oh, I'm excited. Okay, so based on at least a few of the products it's gonna be I'm interested to see what this look turns out to be I already have skin prep on I'm gonna use my lip tinted hue guard I also hope that this moisturizes my skin enough without using another dose of sea submerge and Virgo force field for this mob beauty foundation I'm nervous most cream foundations are quite dry and from the times that I've swatched this one on my Face and skin, it seems a little dry. Great for oily, oily people, but that is not me. The weather, thankfully, is not quite as dry today, so maybe that's good for us. But when I am using a slightly drier formula, I do like to go in straight away after my SPF and moisturizer, so it can really kind of grab onto some of that moisture. So I have the Mob Beauty Ceramide Foundation here. This may or may not continue to live in my kit. It might be more of a summertime thing like the Euphoria. So I have neutral tin in this foundation and I have found that it is a good match. I'm going to go straight with my brush into the cream and start applying. Oh, I have applied this almost like a concealer before, but I have not applied it on my face. So Definitely a first impressions, maybe at the end, if I can think to, or I'll at least insert a picture. So I'm trying to be better about showing you what my makeup looks like a few hours after wear, just because when I sit down to film, you're seeing like the first hour or two of application. And I can tell you something is great all day long, but more than likely you're not wearing your makeup for an hour. So I'm gonna try to be better about that, but I'm only like one and a half dips in and that fully covered what I needed it to. Huh. So there's a side done compared to this side. I would say it's a high medium coverage for sure. Like that took care of pretty much all my redness. And then I had some hyperpigmentation from acne breakouts. It covered really well. Even under my eye, huh? I'm kind of impressed with that. And up close in person, it's definitely evident that I have makeup on. Like it definitely sits on top like any other cream that I've experienced, but I'm curious to see how it kind of settles in. If you watched my makeup reset, I kind of included at the end what's going on. I'll share briefly here in case you're coming to this video first, but I'm in the middle of redoing my office. I'm filming that and it's been so fun to edit. I think it's going to be a fun video to watch, but we also are having some like carpet woes from carpet that was installed when we moved in about two years ago. It's like bubbling, so they have to come and fix it. And so we're like living with minimum things because every room that's carpeted basically has to have all the loose things off of the furniture so they can easily move things around without breaking anything so it's a little chaotic here and today after i film this i just have to kind of finish cleaning up and getting things off surfaces and then doing laundry so just a basic cleaning sunday but there we go i I mean, I'm happy with this so far. I'm also now wondering how much concealing I need to do, but I do want to try this Rare Beauty. I have somewhat tested this out, the eye brightener, but not, not really. So I'm just gonna add a couple of dots on my dark circles and then like one dot in the deep, the deepest part of my socket there just to add a little bit more brightness. I'm gonna try not to get it too much in the crease because I already think, well, never mind. I definitely think that Mob Beauty is gonna crease on me, but we'll set under my eyes to try to downplay it a little bit, but I'm not really going anywhere today. So if these experiments don't work out for the best, 
Not a big deal. I think that added a little bit of brightness, a little bit of coverage, but I don't think it's like as full coverage as I like under my eyes. It's really interesting because I feel like I'm getting really, really high coverage on my cheeks, but then under my eyes, not as... I don't know. Oh, look where I just touched. Oh, I'm not going to like that. I'm someone who doesn't really like to set my entire face. So products that transfer and move around like that are not necessarily my favorite. I'm going to try not to be biased, but I feel like when you know how you like to wear your makeup, you can tell when you're applying something how it's probably going to act. Oh, can you see that? I'm not loving how this, let me get closer. I'm not loving how this looks on my nose, especially after I just powdered. This one Atelier doesn't do that, so it's definitely not, it's like removing coverage too where I powder. Oh, I don't think I like it. That makes me sad because I love Mob Beauty. I. I did a whole dedicated video on Mob Beauty before anyone was really talking about it because I was very excited from a sustainability practice and also because the founder had previously worked at MAC. But I, this feels more like clean, natural makeup to me than the rest of the line that I've tried in the sense that like the performance might not be there. And granted, this might just not be for my skin. and. It's one of those products where I don't know. See, look at that. Do you see that? Just took all of that away. That's crazy. I don't know if it's better for oily skin because it's one of those ones where... I just took away so much coverage there. It's one of those ones where I don't think oily people would like it because it transfers. It doesn't set down and it does have a slightly oily feel. But then the way that it sits on the skin is not really flattering for my dry skin. You guys are probably going to tell me that this looks really nice, but I promise you in person it's already starting to settle in pores and then it's coming off. Yeah. Do you see that? I don't like it. It's really tempting to wipe this off and start over. Yep, that's what we're going to do. BRB. Okay, let's try this again. I'm gonna reapply my sunscreen. I know that some people might say that I should have given it time to dry down. I can tell by that formula that it is not one that's going to dry down. It's gonna remain in the state that it is. And I, on especially on a day where I'm running around and cleaning, I really don't wanna to have to worry about my makeup getting all over everything and being super mindful touching my face and then folding laundry and getting makeup all over it. Like I just, I don't have the capacity today. So we're just going to start over. And that is that. Needless to say, my beauty will be probably going to a friend, but I, I just don't really like that product, which makes me so sad. I love my beauty as a company is what it is. All right. So for foundation, do I want to try to mix my two favorite or go with the Chantecaille? Let's go with the Chantecaille because I think coverage wise it's going to match that Rare Beauty a little bit better and I am going to clean off my brush to get that Mob Beauty off of it. Dang, like that's so disappointing. I love Mob Beauty. That one's just not for me. <sighs> There's a couple of their products that I just don't think they've quite mastered yet. I would honestly put their really lustrous lipstick in that category because it just like it moves you know it moves around the face a little bit that said going to the Chantecaille I mentioned in my kit video that I really fell back in love with this and I've been using quite a bit of it it's just so soothing and hydrating in the winter and it like self levels a bit and it has a nice light medium coverage and I just really enjoy it. It's been nice to use this again, honestly, and I understand why I loved it so much in the beginning, but it's definitely like a deep winter foundation for me. The NARS and the OIS that I love so much, they still work in the winter, although sometimes the NARS can look a little dry if I don't really prep the skin, 
but the Chantecaille is one where like I don't have to prep the skin at all. I can have my sunscreen on and let it sit for hours and hours. Come in with the Chantecaille and my skin's hydrated again. So nice. And I don't worry about transfer, which is lovely. I just, I'm at a place with makeup where if it doesn't stick on my face and it gets all over everything, that's why I don't wear the IT CC cream a whole lot. Like I love it in the summer. It's amazing for that. But the reason I don't wear it all year round, even though I do like the coverage and the finish, is because it transfers and it gets all over everything. I'm going to give the Rare Beauty an honest shot now that we do this. And I've also found that when I'm using a brightening concealer or a color corrector like the Beauty Pie, I don't mind using it all over the center of my face because it's just brightening the center of my face like you would if you were doing like a full contour highlight situation. This Rare Beauty seems very hydrating, which is nice but we'll see how it wears. It definitely did brighten without adding a ton of coverage, which is super nice. The Beauty Pie adds a lot more coverage than this, I think, but this just looks like radiant skin. And now I'm curious how this powder is gonna react because I know the powder works with the Chantecaille and we're gonna go for light coverage today. I don't feel like completely masking things out. I cannot get over that Mod Beauty. That is not how I thought that was going to go at all. I thought if anything, it would look a little dry and just dry out throughout the day. That's crazy. But yeah, I like that Rare Beauty so far. Yeah, and I think if I powder it, it shouldn't be too, too bad creasing wise, but you know how I feel about creasing. And if you don't, creasing happens. Sum it up in a quick sentence for you. But then let's do some bronzer. So the Phytosurgeon's Rosy Daybreak 2 with the Soft Quill. Just add some bronze to the cheeks and the forehead. Today just has not gone how I thought it would. I've gotten a lot of the chore stuff done that I need to, even though there's a little bit left, but like makeup wise and filming wise, but we're really against the lighting in the products today. There, I'm quite bronzed. I probably went a little heavy on that, but I think after the rest of my face is done, it'll make sense. But, oh, I love this product so much. Let's do eyes because I'm not quite sure yet what I want to do cheeks-wise. Definitely using the Finding Ferdinand Khaki Collab, but I don't know what I want it to look like just yet. But I do want to give... The Ilia Cool Nude Eyeshadow Palette a try. I'm going to start with this mid-toned mauve shade. And it looks in the pan like it's going to be a true mauve where it looks like laven gray. When people use laven gray, including myself, I'm like, it's mauve. But I feel like I can't just say mauve because people call so many different things mauve. To me, it's laven gray. It's like a purple that is bleached out with like dust or beige added to it. Maybe both, honestly, like beige and gray added to it. Like that's what mauve is to me and that's what that is. Oh, I don't know what took me so long to use this palette. I mean, honestly, I'm gonna use the shimmery shade here. I don't know why this sat unused for so long. I think it's because I went really hard for mauve and everyone was releasing it, which was so nice because for a long time you could not find this color anywhere but then I just fell into habits with the shades that I was using and this just got left in the wayside is that the saying wayside I just got that I'll fix that or is that my chicken pox scar no that's my chicken pox scar I did get a little bit there this is gonna be a really easy eye man this lighting's really, really trying me today. And then because I need, let me get a, welcome to my brain. I'm going to go get another brush because I, I want to highlight there in an inner corner. Okay, after this, I'm definitely going to clean my brushes. I'm going to use this 
on my brow to help blend some of that. Okay. And then I don't think this is bright enough, but we'll try it. Oh, maybe it is. This is a little inner corner. Definitely could go brighter, but I don't hate it. I love this shade though. This is blended, but I also have a, one of those patches right here that just doesn't take product for whatever reason. I do want to use this shimmery shade here and just add a little eyeliner line. Oh, I'm gonna love this kit that I built because this is like my perfect everyday eye. I just love these shades. Why did I not grab this? Probably because I didn't, it wasn't organized and I kept buying things. Crazy. I love that. A really quick, almost messy eye. I'm going to use the e.l.f. lash extender and then we'll come back for brows, cheeks, and lips. I love this mascara. I cannot believe we finally have a under $10 tubing mascara that is this good. I love it. I love my eyes. I also flicked some mascara around, but I will clean that up. We do need to make some decision with blush. So what I'm really tempted to do is I wore Sunrise from the Après Ski collection from Khaki and Finding Ferdinand the other night. It's quite pink, a little bit more pink in real life than that, I think, from what I'm seeing in the viewfinder. And to kind of show the difference, I will give you Latte, which was from the Summer Broad Collection, which is definitely a beigeier, pinky beige blush. Also, the formulas are much different. You can kind of see just how glossy the Summer Broad Collection was, quite oily. It doesn't quite dry down all the way, so it does stay that way. As someone with dry skin, I really enjoyed it, but it is an oilier formula. This one feels much stiffer and you can probably even see in the swatches, the glossiness on that bottom swatch from Summer Abroad isn't quite as glossy on this new collab. But what I did over top of the Sunrise because it was a little pink was I used the adjuster shade and I used just a touch of chilled on top, which is that purple. I just tapped a little bit and it really helped neutralize it. I think that's what I want to do today to show you. I do really like these colors, but I knew that I would because I khaki is different in skin tone to me, but we both enjoy the lavender grays of the world. So I knew that if she was going for like the purpley cool cheek and the fjords of it all, I would love it. And that is the case. So there is Sunrise on its own, which honestly is absolutely stunning and not too pink. Again, it's a little more pink in person, but as soon as I add that adjuster shade on top, it's like my perfect, like subdued chili cheek. It's not super, bam, you're doing a chili cheek look. It's more subdued than that. So I really appreciate that. It's perfect if you have very fair skin like I do. I just, I really like these products. And even with the formula change, I still really loved Latte and I still use it quite often. And I'm definitely gonna pull out the Summer Abroad collection when summer comes. So I would say if you can get your hand on the hex codes, although Sunrise is still available, but if you can get your hands on the hex codes when they release them and get like the adjuster shades and stuff, this is gonna be super helpful in my kit, I think, because anytime you need to cool something off, it's perfect, especially if you're like me and I have a yellow green undertone, which the kids are calling all of these days that like, I, I don't know if I agree with that. I could get into like the whole theory of why I don't agree with that, but I don't know if there's an appetite for that. And I'm not one to push my opinions onto the masses. I'm just using the bright size, bite size brow palette from e.l.f. in the taupe wax to groom my brows and add a little color. There, 
I, I'm so glad I took that mob beauty off because I'm loving this and I feel very radiant and put together. And I think for lips, for lips, I said I was going to use the, I think I can still do this. I said I was going to use this Sashu um, lip tattoo in mauve because I really love it. And I guess that does really make sense for a mauve look. So I'm going to try my best to not use a liner. This, sometimes I do a good job using it without a liner and sometimes I don't. This is a lip stain that you peel off and it does last really long and I love it, but I'm gonna have to really concentrate to try to line my lips. It'd be helpful if I showed you. Now also, this looks very scary going on, but when you peel it off, it's not this dark at all. All right, then after I apply this, I'm gonna let it dry. And I'll show you the peel off. Nice vampy look for you. Also, I swear, I swear, some people struggle with eyeliner. I can have full confidence in a wing all day. Lip lining, whole different ballgame. A vampy lip, for sure. Look how crazy these lines are. This is what happens when you talk. You gotta let it dry. Okay, I think I let it dry enough, if not. Sorry, but it peels off. Look how crazy. I probably could have exfoliated before this. But see, it's not scary at all. Okay, I will say, do not talk when you apply that. And also, that was a weird noise from Frank. It's gonna cling to dry patches, so it's good to exfoliate first. Quickly apply your first layer kind of thick in, in one go. If you can, then let it dry fully. Don't talk, don't put your lips together. Let them dry. It is a nice stain when you do it correctly. It just adds a little bit of that sheen. Sheen. A little bit of that stain, but I do want to top it with the Finding Ferdinand Khaki Apriski Collection in Cafe Noisette. I said this in my kit video, but in case you missed that, this is a thousand percent the Bonnie Bell Cafe Mocha shade, which I gotta stop talking and applying lip products. The color of it, the slight shimmer of it, and the scent. What a nostalgic thing that has been unlocked, and I'm so happy. So it's not gonna be super true to just if you would wear this on its own, it's just kind of a nice nudie beige but on top of that lip stain i think it goes with this look super well and i feel so pretty i'm dying editing this because i raved about that product and i do love that product but you cannot be talking when you're applying it <laughs> i did not draw it on well because i was talking and then i talked while it was drying and then i didn't exfoliate it was just like it is a good product. You have to use it as the directions say, and you have to have prepped lips for it. <laughs> and it's like, I look like the Joker. <laughs> I'm dying. I just need you to know that like, I'm not totally delusional. And I know that it looks crazy watching it back. It is a good product. If you have the time to finesse it and use it exactly as it is directed, it is not like a slap it on and go product for me anyway. I really need to practice lining my lips. All right, that's it. But yeah, there's the finished look. I think I did the right thing by taking off the Mob Beauty. I love the Apri Ski collection uh, with Finding Fernand and Khaki. Let me know if you want a swatch video. I'd be happy to do that and compare it. But I really love those two shades that I've been wearing the most. I can't wait to try the other ones out. Love the lips. I cannot get over the Bonnie Bell nostalgia of it all. It's so good. And then, yeah, I've I've really fallen back in love with the Chantecaille. And I like that Rare Beauty. It's pretty nice. It adds a lot of brightness. Like, that's the first corrector that, like, adds enough brightness that it refracts light and kind of keeps the blue undertones at bay to a point that I really like. And then also, I'm going to fix my eyebrow here. I don't know if this video is usable. I like this face and makeup. I think we did a really good job with the kit this month. I think it's going to be a lot more fun 
this month. Um, definitely a lot more experimentation and fun to be had. So let me know if you like my makeup kit videos. I love doing them. It's definitely like a cool check-in of makeup, especially now that I'm not buying anything and kind of doing dedicated reviews. But yeah, I hope you're doing well. I hope your face of makeup worked out today and don't be afraid to wipe it off and start over. You know, sometimes you gotta do it. But I hope you're having a wonderful one and I will see you very soon. Bye.